Hi, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk mountain weather and ski conditions. And we just got a lot to talk about. I mean, we're still in this awesome pattern here across the West with the atmospheric river driving the overall forecast. You can see the live camera, or nearly live, there from the base area at uh, Mammoth Mountain. Let me look at my notes here. I mean, they're just reporting some incredible numbers. I mean, it, it, this is why you live, right? To be a meteorologist or to be an avid skier or a boarder. I mean, to live for these kind of conditions and what they produce with these atmospheric rivers, 52 inches in 26 hours, like roughly 50 inches in 24 hours. That's incredible. 69 inches in 48 hours. Uh, on the summit there at over 11,000 feet in Mammoth, uh, ski patrol is reporting 82 inches. So <laughs> out of this, and there's not done yet. We're going to add a lot more and the, the really interesting thing about this is that it is going to send rich pockets of moisture and packets and pieces of moisture into the interior we saw that happen at alta and the wasatch and snowbird they reporting like six inches of snow just from bleed off just from the bleed off of this event and the low hasn't even moved out of california yet uh, the Tetons also, like we're getting a foot up there out of this. So just these pieces coming out, and that's going to continue. The storm cycle continues. There are other storms lined up behind this. So we've got the atmospheric river, you can see that, and the rich flow into the interior. Those are my headlines. But I got to tell you, we might see another small atmospheric river set up early next week even. So this is really good stuff. So let's get into the analysis and I'll move through this. So there is your low pressure sitting off the west coast with that rich flow. And again, it's sending that uh, moisture feed into the west. Let me take you closer in. And we have seen this axis of moisture barely move. It's just uh, shoving all of this like a fire hose of moisture up against the Sierra Mountains all the way from Mammoth up into Tahoe and Donner Pass. And we're seeing some of the biggest totals right on the crest and to the east side of the Sierra Mountains. And overall, this low is a little colder than what we might expect for the Sierra Mountains. So those ratios, those snow totals are going to be on the higher side. And this might be a little more skiable, although we're reaching to the point now, critical mass, where you really have to be at a certain steepness to even go through this. It's just, it has that friction, that stopping power. There's so much snow. The problem is the avalanche danger is extreme. Avalanche Information Center there in the Sierra sending out very stark warnings not to even try to get onto a steep terrain in these conditions. So here's the jet stream. This will tell the tale, and I'm going to run this all the way out. And the next week, there is the low pressure. You can see the bending of the jet stream there off of the west coast. And again, what it's doing is it's just taking that rich flow and it's migrating, sending it in to parts, uh, just clipping the Wasatch and certainly the Tetons. By the time we get into Friday, this is Friday late, so the setup into the weekend, this will be critical. You can see the little dip in the jet stream. Now that is the main low that has departed. It's sitting just south of Salt Lake there into uh, Utah, and what it's doing is it's pushing some snow by Friday night into Saturday in the Colorado as well. Now Colorado will not get the big totals like we're seeing out to the west coast. The Tetons, though, will be in prime shape for some heavy snow accumulations. And even the Wasatch, and I talked about this yesterday at length, the Wasatch really is probably one of the tougher calls here because you'll be getting these pieces of moisture, these pieces of energy, and so you'll get a quick six, a quick seven, and potentially a quick foot coming in. I'll show you that coming up in the snow plume. But by the time we get into Tuesday, so this is next week, this is next week. Look at the bend of the jet. Look at it. It's, it's very familiar to kind of what we're seeing right now. With that kind of orientation, it's possible by Tuesday that we're seeing a smaller atmospheric river, but kind of similar. We could see some big totals out of that by the time we get into Tuesday. So here's our future radar. We'll roll into the, uh, the future here on the clock. And as we look at the, uh, the projection here for where the snow will be by Friday morning, we're looking at it. And there comes the low. It is pulling out of the west. It'll be cruising into the interior. And then it starts to push that shield of snow up over the top there into Nevada and eventually Utah and the Teton Sun Valley in great shape. I'd be ready to ski Jackson Hole on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'd be ready to ski Alton Snowbird on Saturday. And you can see the snow as the low moves inland through parts of western and southwest Colorado, also all the way down from Jackson into uh, the, T the, uh, the Wasatch there of uh, Utah. And then eventually, by the time we get into Sunday, that low will be starting to move out of those areas entirely and will be done with this first part 
this first atmospheric river setup. So by the time we get in the sun, a big time drying across the west. There really isn't anything left of that. There is another low that is sitting off the coast. And you can see it curling in there with some rain and snow all the way from Whistler. And there will be big totals up there in Whistler and all the way down into uh, parts of the interior there as that low hits the coast. And then it's going to start to drop to the south. Look at Monday morning. The moisture is starting to move south. And by Tuesday morning, uh, it's starting to load up. It's starting to load up the Sierra the Ta to Tahoe all the way down into uh, Mammoth by the time we get into Tuesday morning. So again, watching that early phase of next week for a potential uh, small additional atmospheric river. Now that is not set in stone, but it is something that is starting to show up. It could be a minimal atmospheric river at this point, but anything above that norm is very interesting. So to accumulations by Friday morning, look at this. I mean, we're talking heavy additional accumulations before this atmospheric river is done through Squaw and Mammoth, Sierra, Tahoe, Kirkwood still has big totals on the way. And look at the numbers in Sun Valley and Jackson Hole. We're adding additional accumulations on top of what we've already got because of that rich flow that's feeding these areas. By the time we get into Saturday, I mean, we're talking some very good skiing. Look at that. We've added half a foot through the Wasatch by Saturday morning. Another potentially 10 to 12 inches across uh, Jackson Hole. Look at Sun Valley. The numbers keep going up. And we've added new snow in Colorado as well by the time we get into uh, Saturday morning. Sunday morning, the totals could end up looking like this with some of those additional numbers through Colorado. And then the main low is going to move away. So good skiing in Colorado uh, on Saturday and probably some leftover snows for skiing on Sunday. And then we start to move into the next phase of this. Early next week, we watch as the Pacific Northwest starts to add up some big totals from Whistler Blackcomb all the way down into Baker and uh, also Rainier. And then that low could potentially drop south into California. Watch the numbers in Shasta, Squaw, and Mammoth start to tick up again. Um, so that is something watching for early next week. But I got to talk about the Wasatch for a second because, again, I think that's the tr one of the trickiest pieces of this entire forecast. It's possible that the numbers advertised right here in my chart are on the very conservative side. Looking at the plume for Alta, by the time we go from Friday into Saturday, we could be talking about much more sh uh, snow than what I'm showing there. We could be looking at a foot plus. So be ready for that by Saturday if the numbers overperform. And then the next storm that comes in next week, like Tuesday and Wednesday, that could also be a very heavy a healthy shot of snow for the Wasatch. So there you go. It looks excellent across the West. There's a lot to hone in on, a lot of powder to be had. Um, always appreciate you tuning in here. Have a great weekend.